What an interesting way to reload a weapon. What's up everybody, Dre back at it again with another video. You know, it's kind of funny, I just made a video talking about how miserably this crowdfunded game actually failed in my previous video. And now I'm going to talk to you about another crowdfunded game, except I'm hoping that this one isn't going to be in the same boat as the one that I just talked about, because the developer has been constantly asking me to cover his game and relentlessly giving me information. So, I mean, I'm always hesitant when it comes to crowdfunded games. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this in previous videos, but hopefully this is a crowdfunded game we can actually trust. So the name of the game that I'm going to be talking about is called uh, Anadulu? I'm not entirely sure if that's how you actually say that, but uh, according to this, set in Turkey, Anadulu is a first-person shooter sandbox survival centered on building communities, outwitting opposing factions, and exploring Turkey's unique typography. You can choose to endure the irradiated map as a lone wolf or venture through it and build relationships with fellow survivors. Scavenge for weapons and equipment to build your arsenal, travel from village to village along the Silk Road in search of the next assignment or team up with other survivors to convert old ruins and destitute villages into flourishing communities. So that sounds kind of cool. I wonder if this game's gonna have NPCs. And when it says other survivors, does that mean human players? That's what I'm to assume. But anyways, what makes Anadulu so special? Unique and memorable visuals. In a sea of hyper-realistic, desaturated, gritty first-person shooter games, Anadulu visually stands out through its unique art direction, opting instead for a more vibrant personable low poly style. Anadulu not only looks fantastic, but is also significantly easier to develop, forging a more realistic look. The cost and overall time of development is drastically reduced, allowing for more time to be focused on crafting an engaging gameplay experience, creating content, and furthering the game's development. Furthermore, the lower poly count and simplified shaders mean increased performance and high frame rates across the board, resulting in a game that almost anyone can run. So they have a point here. If you think about games like Escape from Tarkov, Hell Let Loose, Squad, Postscriptum, all those realistic looking games. One thing that they all have in common is that there's a lot of like bad performance that happens on those games. And optimization takes a lot of time. Take Insurgency Sandstorm for instance. For the longest time they were just working on, actually I think they're still working on optimization. Like it's really taken away from their content, you know? So they're just trying to make sure that the game is actually stable. So I could definitely understand why they're making a game that doesn't look realistic. It's not the first time I've actually seen a game do something like this. I think a good example of this would be probably due process and maybe uh the one that blue drink made i think it's called uh, warfare 1944 those are two games that decided to not amp up their visuals because they thought that they would prefer a better running game to one that has good visuals but shitty performance all right let's push on to the next thing here engaging an in intricate gameplay the gameplay of anadulu focuses on a variety of in-depth systems and mechanics making the game suitable for any number of play styles and both casual and hardcore players this is primarily achieved through the following and here's where they talk about their game modes. Anadulu supports two official game modes, standard survival mode and scavenger runs. Players playing in survival will find themselves exploring the landscape, collecting supplies, building communities, and raiding opposing factions over long-term gameplay in a single public server. Scavenger runs, however, thrust the player into a random server with a randomly generated character. Players can complete missions and collect loot under a time limit. Any loot the player manages to make it out alive with is transferred to their survival character, where they're able to use, trade, or sell any items collected. Community servers are also supported, allowing for server admins to host their own servers for the general public or for private use. Servers can be customized to their liking with a plethora of settings and options to play around with. And then they talk about extensive base building. Whether you prefer a nomadic lifestyle or working with a community of players, Anadulu has an option for you. Construct your own personal safe haven or take up shelter in a local communal base. Share resources with your group, work together, upgrade to fortify your shared base, and build your own miniature flourishing ecosystem. What does that mean? Like farming? Or can you actually terraform? I'm assuming it's just farming, right? Well, anyways, moving on to weapon customization. It apparently gets in depth here. With modular weapon parts, any weapon can be disassembled and modified to your liking. Craft new parts, mix and match them with parts from other guns, shift them around, and upgrade them to your heart's content. With hundreds of potential variations, Anadulu ensures that you'll be able to craft a weapon that's truly your own. Pretty neat. I like that feature. I always, I'm always a big fan of customization. But anyways, moving on to the next thing here, we got meticulous crafting and farming system. The crafting and farming of Anadulu is extremely non-binary.
binary. Rather than having one specific recipe for an item, the player is encouraged to experiment and find the perfect recipe for them. Each method may have its own unique pros and cons, and some might be complete upgrades to others. Plants and other crafting items can be genetically engineered and treated to change the output or quality of the craft. Lastly, the intricate laboratory system of Anadulu allows the player to use realistic scientific methods to research and build new items. Bunsen burners, filters, beakers, flasks, test tubes, scales, and a variety of lab equipment that can be used to study new recipes and perfect your crafting process. So is this like one of those games where you have to like collect a bunch of that stuff and then bring it back to like a base to make new stuff and then keep going out like rinse and repeat? Like is it that type of game? Kind of like Escape from Tarkov? Like if that's what it is, that's pretty cool. But I guess we'll see. The next one we have here is realistic hacking mechanics. Not all damage is physical. Break into your opponent's networks, steal their data, and take down their defenses from the inside out. Transmit viruses, spy on security cameras, and disarm traps from the comfort of your own base using real encryption methods and an in-game command terminal based on real operating systems. Anadulu provides a virtual hacking system that's both intuitive and realistic. Oh no, the FBI is going to want to look at this game. The next one is a deep trading based in-game economy. Work with NPCs or with other players to build the economy. Choose your profession and sell your services or items to other players and traders, earning both reputation and cash. Partner with certain NPC traders to obtain better deals, exclusivity, and a commission from the profit they earn. Oh wow, this sounds actually pretty in-depth. This sounds like uh, something that Dead Matter tried to do, but I'm not really sure what that game's been up to in a while, but ho hopefully this game does a better job. The rest of this stuff starts to talk about transparency and then their crowdfunding, and I think the main point to take away is, is that it says here that players will never be kept in the dark on the game's development. Now, obviously, I've heard this sentiment before, so only time will tell if that will actually be true or not. Here's hoping that they'll actually keep their word, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about their crowdfunding campaign here. In fact, let's take a look at their page that they got. So at the timing of this recording, they have raised around 41,000. They actually reached their initial goal, which was 10,000. So good for them. Let's look at their tiers here. They've got the first one starting at $35. That's actually quite a bit, but I could definitely see a game like this being around 35, especially if they're saying that they're going to have all these mechanics inside of the game. So I mean, I don't think it's that big of an issue. In fact, that kind of looks more like Escape from Tarkov. Now you think about it, you got the 35, the 65, and the 130. Isn't that like the same as Escape from Tarkov? Well, it's actually cheaper. Okay, yeah, so I could definitely see 35 as being reasonable. So if I was to donate to this project, then I think I would be okay. Like, I could definitely lose 35 to drop in a cool 130 or 140, 50, something like that. But yeah, they got quite a bit of information on this website here. I don't think I'm going to be able to go through it all. Like, if you want to go through all of it, then I'll definitely have a link down in the description. But uh, let's go through why they wanted to do this. Anadulu began as an idea in early 2019, taking massive inspiration from several of the original Arma 2 DayZ mods, Escape from Tarkov, Subnautica, Faster Than Light, Sub Rosa, and Fallout, which were some of their favorite games at the time. They spent around six weeks developing their first prototype for the game and finally pitched it at the 2019 EGX Investment Summit in London. After receiving plenty of interest and fantastic feedback, they decided to go full force and dedicate the next year to creating the game's core mechanics, base fortifications, the inventory system, the movement mechanics, gunplay, hacking, modular weapons, and a number of other gameplay systems. Oh, I think one thing that we need to really talk about is the inventory system because that's going to be a lot like Escape from Targov, I'm assuming. But uh, yeah, let's get through this first. While the initial development cycle is a bit slow, we wanted to make sure we took our time laying a proper solid foundation for the rest of the project rather than just quickly throw together code we would have to write later. A lot of time was dedicated to creating a solid code base and keeping everything properly optimized from the very beginning. Anadulu is currently at a stage where they're combining the mechanics and systems we've been developing proper gameplay and shifting from demo based prototyping into a fully playable experience. We are aiming to support Anadulu's development through our ongoing crowdfunding campaign, allowing us to fund the developers who have been dedicatedly working to create the game, leading up to the game's alpha stage. Several gameplay demos have been released, each serving to showcase a specific set of the game's mechanics. These demos will allow us to showcase the game mechanics ahead of time, and player feedback will help us to test, tweak, and balance every piece of gameplay before entering into the alpha stage. Valuable input and feedback from our players is absolutely crucial to us, so these demos will help to keep the community involved and kept in the loop while the game is still in development. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Um, so we need to talk really quick about that uh, inventory system. It is going to be a lot like Escape from Tarkov. Like depending on which package you actually buy, your inventory will actually be a lot bigger. Like if I was to buy into the first one here, I would just get the 
basic stash, which I'm assuming is also going to be a bit like Tarkov where you can actually upgrade it in game or you can get the next tier up, which will give you a medium stash or the last tier, which will give you the largest stash. So that's kind of an issue that I had with Escape from Tarkov that it's kind of like, a, it's like a very soft core pay to win, I guess you would call it. It's not something that really affects gameplay, but it does give people a little bit of an advantage, but that's only if you're actually good at the game. So I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, I don't think it's really that big of a deal to be honest, but you know, yeah. So when are they actually planning to have the game come out? Well, according to the document that they gave to me, they said that they want to have their first demo sometime in Q1 of 2021, about an hour of enjoyable content. So that's coming up pretty soon here, actually. Well, we'll definitely see because this game does seem pretty interesting. And yeah, that's pretty much all I've really got to say about that. If you guys want to check it out, I will definitely have the links down in the description. And uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to end it. If you enjoyed the fact that I covered crowdfunded games like Anna Dulu, then why don't you uh, like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that's new to the channel, then be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. If you would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month, that's all I really need. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.